I want to welcome you to the sixth annual Center for Entrepreneurship Award Ceremony. It's uh, hard to believe that we've been doing this for six years, but um, it's been a quick six years and, and it's been a whole lot of fun for me and I see a lot of uh, faces out there. People keep coming back, so we must be doing something right and I want to thank you all very much. My name is Bill Barati, and I'm the director of the Academic Center for Entrepreneurship and the um, Dean of Division Three, which is Business and Information Management. This event does not happen without the efforts of some very special uh, people and businesses. I want to say thank you, first of all, to Jeannie Girard. Where are you, Jeannie? Yeah, there she is. <laughs> Jeannie is a staff associate for ACE, and it is Jeannie's hard work and dedication that has brought us here tonight and her planning and organization skills that has made this event a success, and a success, I might add, for the last six years. Thank you to Laura Carlson and all of the facility staff for the, uh, their help in getting this area set up for the, this event, and thank you to our food sponsors who are represented here tonight. Blount Food, Venus de Milo, Not Your Average Joe's, Coastal Ro Roasters, also Chef John Caresimo, Chef Esteban Martinez, and Chef Gloria Cabral, and their excellent culinary team. A special note of thanks for food and beverages goes out to SNS Urban Acres owner Brad Dean, winner of our Developing Entrepreneur, New Boston Bakery owner of owner Jim Souza, winner of Benevolent Entrepreneur, and Carolyn Sackett Vineyards, owned by Alex and Annie. Finally, thank you to all our volunteers for your assistance. Please understand that without your help, we would have a difficult time in pulling this all together. We are here tonight to honor three uh, entrepreneurs. One of the qualities that all entrepreneurs have is vision. Our next speaker is a man who has that entrepreneurial quality as he leads this college. It is my pleasure to, rep uh, to introduce to you Dr. Jack Sprager, president of Bristol Community College. Well, thank you, Bill, and uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, it's always a great night to celebrate entrepreneurship. Uh, we need it so badly in this world today. And uh, I want to thank uh, Dean Berardi and Jeannie uh, for keeping alive the Entrepreneurial Center. Uh, they took it over and uh, have uh, taken it to new heights as we celebrate creativity, genius, really, and uh, move forward on entrepreneurship. Uh, a lot of times you always hear about the stereotype of uh, someone in an attic or a garage that has a great idea, uh, but then how to translate it into the business world and how to make it move, and that's why we're here to help. Uh, we also have some people from the Small Business Administration glad to help uh, with you uh, with those ideas as well and to uh, put, make them into reality. Uh, it's one thing to have it in your mind or... Uh, uh, a model, a clay model or something in the attic, but it's quite another to uh, translate it into the business world. So uh, I want to recognize the winners and thank them, uh, the award winners, uh, for all that they do. Southeastern Massachusetts is a, uh, a better place because of the great work that you're doing and the great work that other entrepreneurs are doing. I did want to recognize Representative Alan Silva in the back there. Alan, would you say hello? And thank you so much for coming. Uh, Alan Silva, ladies and gentlemen. Well, it's a wonderful evening. I want to move forward and uh, let's uh, get on with uh, why we're here, and that's to recognize this, uh, the wonderful work and excellence. And there's not enough excellence in this world to go around, so when we come to, uh, across it, let's celebrate it and uh, make sure that it, uh, it gets its proper due. Thank you very much.
Next is our keynote speaker. Um, Susan Soares of Alex and Annie, Vice President of Retail Operations, is responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of Alex and Annie's retail locations, a leading in national expansion, uh, uh, and a leading in, in the national expansion of, of the stores, ensuring an unparalleled in-store customer experience is of top priority. Leveraging leading edge technology and unique retail training courses offered through Alex and Annie University, her teams are able to engage customers in a more meaningful way. Susan has over 20 years of retail experience and holds a degree in retail management. Prior to joining Alex and Annie, Susan was the New England Regional Training and Development Manager at Ann and Taylor. She is a member of the Women's Jewelry Association, as well as the National Association of Professional Women. Susan Soares. Well, hi, everybody. <laughs> um, thank you so much for having me here tonight. When I talked to Jeannie earlier today, she said it usually rains at this event and that maybe I was bringing a little sunshine along with the positive energy. So I do like to think that I'm a little bit responsible for that. Um, but I know that we are here for the Entrepreneurship Awards. And I know that you all know what that is. But um, oops, I'm going the wrong way. Oh, here we go. Um, it's a person who operates a business or businesses taking a financial risk to do so. I like to think that I'm an entrepreneur. Um, I don't own Alex and Ani. However, I do own my part of the business. I do take risks. I do spend money, although it's not my own. <laughs> um, but in the end, it is. Um, I sh we share uh, you know, the revenue amongst ourselves. So I do consider myself um, an entrepreneur in that sense because I am making decisions on a daily basis. Carolyn entrusts me to take care of her babies, as she says. And I have a lot of babies now. I have 30. Um, so when I started with Alex and Ani uh, two and a half years ago, we had our first store in Newport. 
one store with handwritten receipts in a little touristy seasonal town. And now we have 30 throughout the country and we're international as well. So I've seen a lot of growth in two and a half years. Um, I'm glad to say that I was part of it, pushing it forward, and also learned a lot. Um, I'm, I'm not a techie, but I've learned a lot about uh, technological advances in the retail field especially. And I've been able to work with some pretty amazing people. Um, I, I was reading the program tonight, and I see that um, you know, there is someone who uh, has a lot, actually they all have something in common with Alex and Ani, that one is, you know, started or still is a family-owned business. The Rafalians founded or, or purchased Cinerama, and now Carolyn has Alex and Ani, and they are still, in a way, family-owned businesses. Someone worked out of their basement for a couple of years. I worked out of the basement. Um, the whole Alex and Ani world headquarters was in the basement of Cinerama factory. So we were walking through the factory watching them make the bangles. And the bakery is, um, you know, giving back to the community in ways that we do at Alex and Ani as well through our time with monetary donations as well as um, product. So we give bangles as a donation and sometimes we give a percentage of sales. So I feel like it's perfect that I'm here tonight because I know that we do have something in common. Um, we're looking for all of you to spark the economy here in the community. And, um, you know, we have been blessed to be able to do that nationwide in the communities that we um, go into. So feel like we have a lot in common. This it started it all. So when I asked Jeannie what I should talk about tonight, she said, well, I'm sure that whatever you decide to talk about would be great. Um, you know, what are the obstacles to starting a new business and getting it off the ground and being successful? Well, successful, is, everyone has their own definition of what successful is and, and how much you want. Um, Carolyn started with actually five cocktail rings and she walked right in, um, into New York, into one of the showrooms, and they said, well, where's the rest of your collection? And she said, well, here it is. This is my collection. And they said, well, this isn't a collection. She said, well, yes, it is. This is my collection. So that's what she started with. Um, and at that time, when she went back to create new collections and she was deciding what to name her company, Alex and Ani, her daughters, was the only thing that she could think of. So they are now in college, but this is the age that they were when she really started her company. The logo that she created way back then is the same logo that we're using now. Um, we may have changed the font that says Alex and Ani and added the positive energy, but we've always kept the flower, and if you look closely, there are two A's in there as well. So consistency, knowing that people will recognize your logo across time. It's timeless. This was her first website way back when. It looks much different now. It was actually played in the video uh, that you just saw, but one of the things here is spiritual armor. And that is exactly what an Alex and Ani bangle is. Because it has meaning to the person that wears it, you are arming yourself spiritually to take on the day. Is there anyone who doesn't know or has never been into an Alex and Ani store or a retailer that sells Alex and Ani? A few of you, okay. So just to give you a little bit about what that experience is like, um, it's all about meaning and making your visit mean something to you. Whether you're purchasing something for yourself or you're purchasing a gift for someone else, it means something. You're spending your time and your money. So I'm sure all of you, even the men, can remember um, where you received all of your jewelry from. I, I don't care if it costs two cents. You know who gave it to you, or where you purchased it, you know how much it cost, why you bought it, and for women, sometimes it was an impulse buy, it was the wrong color, but you needed it because you were going out that night, or whatever the case may be, you remember where you got your jewelry from. So with Alex and Ani, let's just escalate that times a million and add a symbolic meaning behind it. Strength, inspiration, guidance, love, prosperity. Those are all the things that make us different. 
So going from a collection of 12 cocktail rings to a retail store in Soho, which has now been open for two years or over two years, in the neighborhood that she used to live in, most people would think, I've reached success. I've opened a retail store. The Cranston, Rhode Island store in Chapel View in its first year did $7 million. Um, I know eye-opening, I heard a wow. It was a wow, I know. I worked there the day after <laughs> Thanksgiving, the first week that we opened, and it was incredible. The people that were coming in, not just for the bangle, but for what it meant. And that is why in all of our stores, the first thing you walk into is a symbol wall, because that's what it's about. It's not, can I help you, what are you looking for? It's what are you looking for today? Guidance, strength, patience maybe? <laughs> if you have a couple of kids with you. So that's how we greet you. And then we ask you what it is that jumps out at you, whether it's for yourself or for the person that you're purchasing for. Salt Lake City, Utah just opened on Wednesday. It's the newest addition to the family. So we are spreading across the East, the East Coast as well as going out to the West Coast. This is what makes Alex and Ani different. And that's what I encourage all of you to do, is to find one thing about your business that makes you different from everyone else. When I started at Alex and Ani, um, the CEO said to me, whatever you see is normal, I know you have a lot of experience and that really doesn't mean anything to me. He said, whatever you see is normal, do the opposite. We want to be different. So after being in retail for 20 years with a company like Ann Taylor that is very structured and very, you know, a little conservative, um, it was hard for me to kind of break out of that, that thought process and to be different and, and to be a, a trailblazer in a way. And so that's how I think of every decision I have to make. What is everyone else doing and let's do it different? Or let's do the same thing but put a little twist on it. And so that's what I encourage all of you to do as well. Think outside of the box. So this, for those of you who don't know, this is one of our expandable bangles. And as you can see, it does have the charm, and each one comes with a meaning card. So we now have our customers that collect all of their meaning cards, and they keep them in their handbags. And they, they have them on a chain of some sort. And whenever they need a little inspiration, or whenever they need a little courage or strength to get through the day, they look at their cards and why am I wearing this? So it isn't just about the strength, the motivation, and the knowledge that wearing this piece will empower you with. It's also about tackling life's twists and turns. It's the path of life. So each one has a meaning. These are just some of the ones that we have. So although each one of them has a meaning behind it, they are all different. So without knowing in detail what the uh, award winners do for this evening, I know I, even if I read in detail, I, I may not completely understand having my, um, my retail brain intact here. Uh, but it's along the same not lines, but with a dif different twist. So there's the flat and the 3D, but all with a message. And as you saw in the video, this is our force field. So for the people who do wear their Alex and Ani bangles, they feel empowered, they feel protected. And when you go out into the world with that confidence and feeling empowered, you bring that into the room. Just like I like to think I brought the sunshine today. And so that is what the Alex and Ani bangles do for the people that wear them. Now, when I mentioned a little bit earlier about um, boosting the economy in the communities that you work in. Um, last holiday, it was said in, uh, online on the East Greenwich patch uh, that we had the Alex and Ani effect on Main Street, USA. And that really is due to this. We were able to boost the businesses around us by bringing the customers into our store. So they were able to go in, across the street into other local businesses, and then we all fed off of each other. And having really strong relationships with our neighbors is very important to us, because just like we want to greet everyone that comes into our store as a customer, we, as our 
as they're coming into our home, we also want to know our neighbors and welcome them into our homes as well. This is a little magazine that some of you may be familiar with that we were just uh, spotlighted in. Ink Magazine, The Disciplined and the Divine. This is another thing that makes Alex and Ani so successful. Surround yourself with people who do something that you need better than you do. You need to know what that is, though. So Carolyn is extremely creative, extremely creative. That is why she does what she does. She also has a very sharp business mind. But Giovanni is extremely disciplined. He comes from uh, the military, and he can really blow up any idea in a good way. They're an odd match, but they're a perfect match at the same time. They keep, keep each other grounded and balanced. So when putting together the team around you, making sure to look for people who have a different skill set. One of the things that I do when I bring in a new manager is I have them take an assessment. It's called Strengths Finder. I don't know if any of you have ever taken that or, or been exposed to it. There's no pass or fail. You just take an assessment to find out what your natural strengths are. And then we manage to those strengths. So isn't it better knowing what your strengths are and working with those instead of kind of beating your head, head against the wall, trying to work on things that you know you're never really going to be great at? So let's hire someone else or get some help in that area so that you can really excel and be great at the things that you have a natural talent for that have gotten you where you are or will get you where you want to be. So this is the little excerpt that was in the East Greenwich patch. So we were boosting sales and they were boosting ours as well. We were welcomed with open arms. Charity by design, as I mentioned at the very beginning, uh, we're very proud that we're able to give back through our charitable donations. And as Giovanni, our CEO, would say, we have a triple bottom line. We are a profitable business. We give back to the community through our donations in a couple of different ways. And we're also an eco-friendly company. So we are protecting the earth. We're made in the USA. We're keeping things here in the country. So we consider that a triple bottom line. And Charity by Design is the department and the program that we are really becoming very, very well known for, in some cases before we even open a store in a certain area. We have national partnerships with the American Cancer Society, with the American Heart Association. Last year alone, we donated over $2 million to different organizations. This year alone, from having events inside of our stores, We've donated over $100,000 to local organizations, not nationally based uh, organizations with a local affiliate. They are your, um, I think we had a Girl Scout troop and the Baseball League, those who are looking for different ways to raise funds and, again, being involved in the community. So any way that you can get involved in the place in which your business is in will come back to you tenfold. So we're really proud to be able to donate a percentage of our sales to organizations. Some of our national partnerships, um, or even local partnerships, have their own charm. And that's what these are. They are designed in a way just like the charms that we have as part of our, what we call the bangle bar, that our bartenders sell. Um, and these are all designed with the organization and Carolyn herself. Carolyn does design every charm and puts her stamp of approval on every one. So you will see we are in uh, April is Autism Awareness Month and you'll see a puzzle piece there. So 20% of the sales for that goes to Autism Speaks. Okay. So every one of these charms as well as these benefit an organization. So as new businesses and businesses trying to get off of the ground, it's not always possible to give a monetary donation uh, at the beginning. But there is a way to give of yourself and of your time. And then again, that exposure will come back to you as well. The path of life. It's the same charm that I showed earlier. 
This is a book which is a collection of stories from our customers that sent to us why they wear the Alex Anani. Why is it special to them? Setting yourself apart from anyone else who is in the same industry as you are is extremely important. We're not jewelry. We're a positive energy company that delivers our message through jewelry at the moment. We will have other product extensions coming down the line as well because I know I was already asked once today and I'm asked a lot, especially when I'm in front of new people, is how are you going to sustain this growth? You've opened so many stores in a couple of months. Well, you're looking into next year and the year after, and how are you going to sustain? Plan ahead and not day to day. Be proactive and not reactive. As you grow so quickly, those are some of the challenges that we had. Growing fast is glamorous on the outside. It's tough on the inside, making sure you have everything that you need, that you have enough of, you have the customers coming through the door, but do we have enough of staff to service those customers? Are we advertising correctly and enough? Do we have enough bangles in the store? Do we have enough packaging in the store? What are the things that we need to sustain that growth? So those are some of the things that smaller businesses need to consider is not just think like a small business, think like a big business. And we had a, um, a wardrobe consultant come into one of the manager's meetings that I had, and what she said is about clothing, and it stuck in my head, and I think it really applies to anything. She said, don't dress for the position you have, dress for the position you want. So it's the same thing in business. If you want to be a big business or a successful business, then act like that at the beginning with your thoughts and your attitude, and that energy will propel you forward. So the path of life is, as I said, a collection of stories about strength, motivation, and knowledge. They are the customers that walked through, the store, walked through our doors in the store. Oops. Oh, sorry about that. And this is just a page about uh, the stories that we do have. Um, it is available in the stores, but it's, it's more for an inspiration than it is for anything else. And we're proud to display it because we want to highlight some of the stories that we hear on a daily basis. We cry with the customers that come in. We laugh with them. They're not purchasing gifts for just today. It could be in memory of someone, or it could be for the future. So we're celebrating and we're memorializing at the same time. Um, one of the things at, that has also been challenging is going from 20, I'm one of the 23 people that started with Alex Nani two and a half years ago, as I mentioned, in the basement, and we did, um, you know, $1 million. Last year we did $80 million, and we have over 600 people, and as I said, now we have 30 locations. Focus, surround yourself with really great people, Balance yourself with people that know the other things that you don't know that will help to make you successful. And ask questions and ask for help. Because that's what I've done to, to really broaden my base of knowledge. And then I've also been able to share my knowledge with those who didn't know about retail. And that's been a lot of fun too. So I do congratulate all of you who are being acknowledged tonight, and I wanted to thank you again for having me here today. I'm always very excited to share the story of Alex and Ani uh, because I believe that Carolyn started this business in the same way that many of you are starting your businesses as well. Made in America, there was a time when the term was synonymous with quality, innovation, high style, in an overall commitment to excellence that was the embodiment of a nation and a gift to the world. She wakes up every morning on the left side of the bed. But this morning she woke up on the floor. The sun's coming out like a train through the window. And the radio is playing the same song over and over again. Energy. My energy goes into that piece. My thought process, my love, my everything that I am that's moving is in that piece.
So I can tell you that who made it, how it was made, where it was made, who benefited along the way, how many families it represented. And you can't get that, unfortunately, product made overseas, because that's all it is, it's just a product. Mm -hmm. I'm selling something that's a little bit more alive. America is a promise of quality once again. Made in America is a statement to be uttered with pride once again. Thank you very much. She's the consummate salesperson. Um, when I met her this evening, first thing she asked me and looked for were the bracelets up and down my sleeve. <laughs> and I told her I didn't have any. She said, well, we're opening a men's line very shortly. <laughs> um, one of our elected officials walked in a little bit late, but uh, Mr. Uh, Representative Paul Schmidt is here joining us. Thank you, Representative, for uh, coming here tonight. It is now time uh, for our awards presentation. Mr. Joe Marshall, um, who is a BCC graduate. He is the owner of J. Marshall um, Associates. He is a past award winner um, from, um, a from ACE, um, has agreed to help us with the award ceremony. So if Joe. Oh. Not Joe. Sorry, Richard, I was told Joe. He's comfortable more and more as I do this morning. Is that what it is? It is. <laughs> it you, is. Thank you very much for having me. I think this is the third year in a row that I've uh, had the honor of giving out the awards. And uh, thank you for Alex and Nani. I know what to give my wife now going forward. <clears throat> Let's get started. The first award is for the developing winner. And. The award winner is Brad Dean from SNS Urban Acres in Fall River, Massachusetts. Urban Acres, for those people who don't know, is a family-owned business that has developed a way to use family, uh, Fall River's famous mill space with solar power in a whole new way. Using a highly sophisticated hydroponics method of growing vegetables and other produce indoors with 100% organic pest control methods, they were able to create the perfect growing environment. They soon realized that their hydroponic system not only allowed them to avoid chemicals and contaminants, but also gave them better tasting and more nutritious produce. They are able to hand mix just the right nutrients to optimize plant growth and flavor. Thanks to their ultimate controlled growing environment, they can allow all produce to ripen right on the vine and be picked up at the, pe uh, picked at the peak of perfection. Once their system was underway and the family was happily enjoying the fruits and vegetables of their labor, they were bombarded with friends and neighbors asking how they could purchase healthier veggies. They then created a year-round community-supported agriculture, also known as CSA, so people can purchase healthy veggies all year long. Their website, www.urban-acres-farm.com, is also available on the website. With further ado, let's welcome Brad Dean, the this year's Developing Winner Award. It's an honor to be up here tonight. Um, 
as you heard, SNF Urban Acres is a family-owned business. Um, if I didn't mention my parents, my sisters, my nephew, all the people that I've had to sit here and listen to my crazy ideas and all the work we've had to put into this, I wouldn't be up here. Um, it's great to see that Urban Acres' goal of providing fresh vegetables the entire year and healthy vegetables for this community has been recognized. Thank you again. I can't even, ex uh, I can't even start to appreciate how this honor is. Thank you. Smart to always thank your family first. <laughs> always smart. Uh, the next award is the Benevolent Entrepreneur Award. And I've done this again for about three years, and I can't tell you, I've never seen more people in this room than tonight. And I think we know why. The Sears Benevolent Entrepreneur Award winner is Jim Souza from... to read his bio, but it seems like we all know who he is. Uh, new Boston Bakery, Fall River, Mass. Jim has operated for more than 20 years from its New Boston Road venue. The New Boston Bakery is the go-to location for incredibly prepared bakery items and expanded breakfast and lunch menu. With all items made the way your grandmother would if they had his recipes. Jim, with the assistance of his sister Gail, his father Herman, and another 10 to 12 family members and like family employees, Keep this relatively new Fall River landmark packed with loyal customers who are here apparently tonight as well, who came for the great food and beverages and for the family atmosphere that makes people feel at home. While at the same time feeling they're an upscale Boston Newberry Street location or maybe New York City's Upper East Side eating establishment. The Preservation Society of Fall River, the Friends of Oak Grove Cemetery, Forever Paws, a Fall River no kill animal shelter and adoption network, the Highlands Neighborhood Association and the Community Preservation Act Committee are among many groups that have benefited and continue to benefit from Jim Sousa's hosting of special events and garden parties to support their worthwhile activities. Jim Sousa has provided to many other organizations and schools through his contributions of time, money, and of course, delicious new Boston bakery pastries. Durfee High School, Connolly High School, other public, parochial, and private schools, as well as the Girl Scout groups have benefited from Jim Sousa's generosity and is hosting pastry making demonstrations to the delight of those who assist and get you to enjoy their culinary efforts. What a mouthful, Jim. <laughs> Recently, Jim Sousa stepped up and stepped out of his comfort zone and his bakery to organize standouts on Fall River Street corners to support the passage of the Community Preservation Act in Fall River. This referendum passed in every precinct in Fall River and its passage and implementation will provide significant revenue to support the reconstruction and preservation of landmarks, parks, and open space throughout Fall River. Without further ado, Jim Sousa. Thank you very much. Thank you. I didn't realize I did that. Um, I graduated from Bristol Community College in 1981 uh, with a degree in computer science. And upon graduating, I acquired a job in Newport uh, working for a contractor. Uh, and I worked on a naval base as a computer programmer doing weapon simulation for the Navy that trained sailors to do uh, launch uh, Tomahawk missiles and ADCAP torpedoes. I was there for 12 years and um, required a lot of math skills, which wasn't my uh, high-end in school, and I didn't feel that it was uh, my place in, in, in life. Uh, I, my my uh, roommate of 12 years was going to school for her bachelor's of engineering degree, and she said when she finished that she would take a nice easy class in baking, and I said I would take it with her. Well, she graduated and didn't take the class, but I did. <laughs> Went to Johnson & Wales, took one class in pastry arts, and I realized I enjoyed it. Um, from there, I started baking stuff out of my mother and father's home and selling it to the friends, family, and coworkers. And it just seemed to be extremely popular and everybody loved it. So that went on for several years. And one day, it must have been a bad day at my other job, but I passed this one shop down the street from my father's, went in, and I rented it. The place was a dump. 
with the help of my family, which I could not done it without. My brother, unbelievable, fixing it. Um, my father, my mother, my sister, like again, family, friends, everybody I knew with their little niche helped me. And um, November 21st, 1992, New Boston Bakery was born. Our neighbors immediately gravitated to it and it became an instant success, it seemed. Uh, several years down the road, a building across the street came available. Uh, I purchased the building and everyone said that owning your business or owning your building, would, you would you know, uh, own your, your, your destiny. And I uh, purchased that building yet again. My brother fixed it <laughs> and uh, with the help of other family and friends also, we expanded it, added a light lunch menu and business continued to grow and hired a few more people. And um, several years down the road from there, um, John, uh, who owned a pizza place up the street, joined our team and brought in his culinary skills. And with his devotion and dedication to the culinary field, he exploded our business uh, where our lunch is quite crazy now. And uh, so it's been quite a, quite a ride. Uh, I, can, I couldn't have not done this without family, friends, and, uh, and the neighborhood in general. Um, through the years, it's been an honor to help organizations like the Fall River Historical Society, um, the Preservation Society of Fall River, which I'm a member of, board member, um, the Alzheimer's Association, um, which is close to me. My mom passed away from it. Fall River Pours of Fall River, uh, many of the local schools, St. Vincent Home, and numerous other organizations um, that it's been an honor to help. Um, Again, there's so many people to thank. My father, from day one, unbelievable. My mom, who's passed away, uh, was a big, big uh, supporter and catalyst for my shop. My brother, my sister, godparents, cousins, uh, friends, the best, best customers. Um, I, I can't even explain them. Um, Steve Kamara, I'd like to thank you for nominating me for this award. Uh, the Bristol Community College Academic Center for Entrepreneurship for giving me this award. And um, I'd like to dedicate this to my mom, um, who's extremely missed the shop. And um, again, thanks all of my family, friends, and um, the customers for supporting me and being here today. Thank you. That's tough to follow, Jim. Uh, the last award is the Cornerstone Entrepreneur Award. And this year's winner is Edward Ed Viveris, Maplewood Machine from Dartmouth, Mass. Edward began his business in the basement of his home in 1986, and in 1988 moved to a larger facility in Fall River, Mass. Due to the growth of his business, Maplewood Machine recently moved to a much larger facility in Dartmouth, Mass, where his company has received numerous awards, for instance, the 2001 Supplier of the Year Award from Raytheon Corporation, the 2009 Supplier Excellence Award, Four Star from Raytheon, and the 2010 Supplier of the Year Award, again, from Raytheon. These awards are only given to the best companies that work closely with Raytheon and viewed by the industry as an outstanding achievement. Recently, the company has started training to become a lean manufacturing system and will eventually transition into this new technology as their everyday mode of operations. Despite all of his company's award, as has been very involved in the community, he has done numerous charitable works for Battleship Cove, the Dartmouth Police Athletic League, where he has volunteered his time for 18 years to promote the Get Hooked on Fishing, Not Drugs program for our youth. As a Cub Scout and Boy Scout troop leader for 15 years, he helped kids to become good citizens in our community and provide guidance during these formative years. He is also a fourth degree member of the Knights of Columbus and has been involved in the faith at St. Julie Billart Parish as a member of the Finance Committee and worked as a chef for many community events. Ed is an outstanding person and well respected in the community. He's married, has four sons, three of whom attended BCC, one has since graduated, and Ed himself also graduated from BCC. Without further ado, let's give it up for Ed Viveris, the Sears <laughs>
First of all, I'm not a speaker, but I can't shut up sometimes. <laughs> but uh, I'll do the best I can. As, as uh, you heard, Maplewood Machine started out um, in a basement. Um, it was my former business partner who started it back in 1982, actually. And uh, we teamed up in 1988. Um, he was working out of his basement, I was working out of my basement, and basically we joined together as a partnership. Um, back in 2008, he decided to retire, and uh, I, I took over the company 100%. Um, at that, after that, I basically um, wanted to be able to expand and grow the business. Because back then, the need was there. Um, so that's when I purchased a building in Dartmouth. It's a much bigger building. Um, we all know that the economy has hit us and hit some people a little bit more than others. Um, but you're going to keep fighting. You're going to keep fighting to do the best that you can. Um, I've got great employees that work for me. I've got a great family uh, who supported me for many years. And I, too, Jim, have a brother that was my right hand when I... Uh, Bought my new building. He retired, wasn't sure what he was going to do, but I put him to work. <laughs> and I want to thank him for that, my brother Augie, my little brother as I call him. Um, uh, I want to also thank, um, actually I do want to mention that uh, Maplewood Machine participated in a couple of programs through the state of Massachusetts. We actually did the um, ISO certification uh, through workforce training. So for new people, new entrepreneurs, you've got, you've got uh, a lot of things out there for you to look into to hopefully help you um, through some processes. Um, doing training with your employees can be a very expensive proposition. Um, the Workforce Training Grant helped us out and it paid for 80% of that cost uh, with a match that you were responsible to, um, to meet that goal in the training process. Um, without that program, <clears throat> excuse me, it wouldn't have happened. Um, and then about two years ago, we, uh, we went back to the workforce training grant uh, people and we, uh, we just fulfilled um, and just uh, finalized our lean training. Um, in the industry that we're in, it's important. It's very important for you to be able to Try to keep up with the times, which is difficult, but also to be able to, you know, get recognition with your customer base. Um, it's important to be able to do the best that you can, and that's what we've done at, at, uh, at Maplewood Machine. I really want to thank my employees for uh, supporting me. I want to thank my wife, Donna, for supporting me, my boys, my son, Josh, my quality control manual, my left and right hand man at work. He's doing a great job. I also want to thank Mini Bourgeois who nominated me for this award. Um, it's a great, great honor. Um, when uh, Jean called me, um, I mentioned it to her this evening when she called me to tell me that um, I was going to be awarded the Entrepreneurship Award. I told her this evening, I said, you know, I hope I didn't sound like I was not excited. I said, I was very excited. You just caught me way off guard. I says, I was busy. I says, and I never expected something like this. So, again, I want to thank uh, Annie Bourgeois for nominating, and I want to thank BCC for recognizing local businesses as you do. I think that's a great, great way to reach out to the community. Um, again, thank you very much, everyone. Before we get to the honorable mentions, I just think it's interesting to point out as I was standing up here, you see all the three different companies that were awarded the different awards. They all had similar traits, passion, drive, commitment, and family. Very good stuff. Honorable mentions. Developing honorable mention award. Unfortunately, they weren't here to make it tonight, but John Peters and Tom Peters of Ecological Spray Foam Insulation of Tiburton, Rhode Island, and accepting the award on their behalf is Lori Driscoll. Lori. Uh, 
Uh, honorable mention for benevolent mention is Chris Rapold from Personal Best Karate in Norton, Mass. It's so nice. I haven't met you before, and you said, you know, I'm so proud of you. It just felt wonderful. Uh, this is quite an honor uh, to, uh, to be presented in uh, Jim. Uh, I see why I took honorable mention right now. <laughs> That's quite a story you have. Uh, for the people that aren't familiar, I run Personal Best Karate. It was started about 21 years ago. And when I grew up, I had the good fortune of coming up in, a, in schools and with families where community service was just kind of what you did. It wasn't something that you did for press releases or recognition. And, you know, I just grew up assuming that that's just what you did. So when I opened the school, my work was really just an extension of that. And we started out our, our biggest piece is our uh, Thanksgiving drive that we do every year. About four years into the business, I started with a goal of feeding 50 families in need uh, for Thanksgiving. And that first year, we fed 64. And it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew and it grew. And it really is truly just like the work that I do, and many of us do as entrepreneurs, it's our labor of love. I'm proud to say each year, Personal Best feeds over 3,000 families a year. And um, I think what I'm most proud of is the, the, the spirit of benevolence was installed in me when I was very young. And the people that actually make the deliveries uh, on Thanksgiving start at age three. You know, they're walking up to the door with their parents and they're making those deliveries. And we've been doing that for years. My own two children do it with me. To us, that's what Thanksgiving is, is doing our turkey brigade. And over the years of doing it, I've seen so many outgrowths of it. It's just so, it's so inspiring. Uh, we also are very active in our community. We've raised over $100,000 for our local school system, uh, which we're certainly very proud of. And, uh, you know, we do a lot of work with at-risk children. To date, we've provided over a million dollars within our five campuses of scholarships to children that have been deemed at-risk by their principal, guidance counselor, state rep, et cetera, people in the community that have brought those names forward. And I always think of it, if, you know, if it's not us, then who is going to do that work? So I'm proud to accept this award, but certainly behind all of us, and I think there's certainly a common theme that you know, we're the person up here, but there's an entire team of people that are back at our five campuses tonight, you know, running our classes so that I can be here uh, receiving this award. So I want to thank Tricia White, who is, a, uh, is part of my inner circle. Uh, you know, I was blessed younger to have a family that raised me, I think, with very good values, and I'm blessed today to have an inner circle of people that help to advise and support me, and, and Tricia is certainly one of those people. And uh, I'd like to thank all of you. My four-year-old just asked me about karate, so we'll talk later. <laughs> President Sprager never misses a beat. There's one other thing that the entrepreneurs had in common this year. Two out of the three are BCC grads, for those people who didn't know, which is an important part. And last but not least, the last honorable mention is the cornerstone mention, Walter Callen, Transit Services, New Bedford, Massachusetts. Thank Richard um, and President Sprager for assisting in those um, awards. And um, it, it's obvious that um, we picked uh, three excellent winners, as well as three excellent um, honorable mention people. And the honorable mentions could have very well been. Um, the award winners. It was a very difficult decision. I want you all to understand that. And um, the, the committee that, that 
makes the final decision, labored over um, all of them. Because as I say, they're all excellent entrepreneurs. And you can tell from some of the speeches here that they're all passionate about what they do. And, and all of them have taken a risk. And quite frankly, that's what entrepreneurs do. And when this economy comes back uh, to where it was, it's going to be as a result of you young entrepreneurs and um, the rest of the entrepreneurs that are out there. So I thank you all very much. Yes. At the beginning of, of uh, this evening, I gave a lot of thank yous, and, and all of those thank yous are well deserved. But I left one gentleman out, and it seems that I do this every year, and I save him for last. But Rafael Figueroa, who has been running around here taking uh, pictures, is an excellent friend of BCC. He is here every year taking pictures for us. We appreciate you very much, and uh, we thank you for all that you've done.